In this video, we'll look at how to place wainscoting using cabinets. Wainscoting panels can be found in the library or you can create your own with the base cabinet tool. Let's begin with the wainscoting from the library and place it along this back wall. In the library, when I search for the term wainscot, you're going to find this in a few different places. One is in the core catalog underneath millwork and then wainscoting. There are also catalogs available from manufacturers. If you open those up and download those, you'll find wainscot panels. I'm going to use the one from the core catalog. And underneath wainscoting, let's look at the double panel. And you're going to see that there's a center, a left, and a right corner. The left and the right corners are going to have a slightly different style size so that it has a equal spacing when you go around the room. Let's begin by placing the center one and I'm just going to click and place this inside the room to make this a little bit easier to see. Let me switch my view over to the vector view. Let's double click and open up this base cabinet that makes up this wainscoting panel. This is a base cabinet. You can see that on the general panel the size information 18 by 54 and the depth is 1 inch. There's no countertop on it, there's no toe kick on it, and I'm going to make a wainscot panel a little bit later in the video. Once I have the information for this wainscot set, then I can simply slide that over against the corner of the wall, use the multiple copy tool, and in this case, I'm going to set the interval of that to be every 18 inches. Move my cursor over the wainscot, and then I'm going to slide that down. You see that it kind of clips into the wall. Pull it back, and then I'll just bump it so that it goes right to the wall. Let me undo that, and let's take a look at the process of creating our own wainscot panel with the base cabinet. With the base cabinet tool, let's click and place the cabinet, and then I'm going to double click and open it up. With this default cabinet that was placed from this sample plan, let's make some changes so that we can create a wainscot panel. I'm going to begin with the width. I'm going to set it to be 18 inches. I'm going to set the height of it to be 42 inches, and then the depth of it to be 1 inch. I'm going to remove the countertop, and on the toe kick, I'll go ahead and remove the toe kick as well. On the box construction, I'm going to go ahead and change this to be a framed cabinet. There's control for your overlay information. I'm going to change this to be an inset cabinet style. On the front, sides, and back, I'm going to come in and change the separation at the top. I'm going to change that to a blank area. I'm going to put a molding up here. I'm just going to set that to be 3 inches. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the bottom. I'm going to change that to be a blank area. And I'm going to change that to be 7 inches. That's where we're going to put our moldings. And then when we go to the face items, I've got the bottom face item as a door. I'm going to change the upper one to also be a door. And then once I make that change, let's go ahead and change the height of it to something like maybe 12 inches. And then on the door drawer, I need to remove the hardware. And we'll simply come in here and say none. You can see that the doors here are slabs. We'll make that correction in 3D. We'll browse out to the library and find a raised panel and adjust that in 3D. The last thing I want to do in the dialog is set a molding for the top and the bottom. Let's come over, add new. In the core catalog underneath moldings, let's take a look at the chair rail, the profiles that are available. I'm going to select one of the profiles and then let's set the height of this and the width of it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to set the height of this to be something like three inches. That will match the upper one. And I may just change the offset of that maybe. So I'll put in negative half inch. That will pull it up a little bit. And then for the width, let's go ahead and set it at two inches. And the last thing I want to do is let's add one more molding. Again, come down into the moldings. I'm going to select a profile from the base molding. And then we'll set the information for this. Let's set the width of it to be maybe two inches as well. And then the height of it, let's go ahead and set this to be something like six and a half inches. And then we need to move it from top down to the bottom. And then let's go ahead and click OK. 
Then I'm going to go back over into the library. Let's clear out our Wainscott search. I'm going to come down into our manufacturer's library as soon as we clear out that search. And let's find a new door style in one of the manufacturers. So let's come down. I'm just going to choose one in here. Grab this door and then I'm going to go ahead and replace this on both components. And then I'm going to use the material eyedropper. Let's change the entire cabinet color applied on there. And since this is an 18 inch wainscot panel, we should be able to use the same multiple copy at 18 inches. Slide my cursor over the top of it and then make that final adjustment on the last one over here. So making your own wainscot panel is a matter of opening up the base cabinet tool, configuring it, choosing your door style, and then you can also save this into the library. Simply click on the wainscot panel, use the tool in the lower edit menu, add to library. Once you have it in your library, good practice to maybe rename this. So I'm just going to click on this and I'm going to rename it to a wainscot cabinet. And now I can easily reuse this for future projects. That wraps up this video on wainscoting using cabinets. To learn more, please see our other videos as well as the built-in help. Thanks for watching.